So good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is Mark Coleman from Paul's Photo and the Creative Photo Academy. On behalf of myself, the Creative Photo Academy, our friends at Simba Marara Expeditions and Macon Safaris, and the people of Kenya and Uganda, I want to welcome you to our amazing session tonight on our preview of our upcoming safaris to Africa in 2023. I know a lot of you have already registered to join us on Thursday, where I'm going to present the lessons learned, my photographic lessons from our recently returned a trip in July. And I know that a lot of you are gonna be joining us on Sat Friday night and Saturday night here in Los Angeles at the Kenyan Consulate. That's 3550 Wilshire Boulevard in Los Angeles, uh, Suite 1900. Um, the Kenyan Consulate is hosting a reception and they're hosting a show of my photographs. So we're gonna have the opening on Friday and Saturday from two to 7 p.m. Friday and Saturday. It's gonna be awesome fun. And I hope all of you who are local here in Los Angeles have a chance to swing up there and see it. You know, the uh, Kenyan Consulate is um, uh, in, little, uh, in uh, a Koreatown section of LA. There's parking in the basement of the building, it's paid parking, and then you come up to the 19th floor and there'll be reception. You'll meet Maurice, you'll meet the Consul General um, of Kenya, and it's awesome. You'll see that I am an honorary Kenyan citizen, and this is so cool. So um, I hope you'll all join us on Thursday night for the technical photography tonight. We're not gonna talk about any technical photography. It's gonna be simple. It's more gonna be logistics on the trip and to get you going and then inspire you to come and join us. So any questions, uh, Jen? No questions. Awesome. So I wanna welcome you to our Safari preview. We're going to have a great time tonight. It should be 45 minutes or an hour with time for questions at the end. So I'm just going to jump right in. So my name is Mark Komen from Paul's Photo and the Creative Photo Academy. I love to travel. And more than loving to travel, I love to travel with you. Um, I like to get out with you, meet the people of the world, and do amazing and exciting things together. You know, Mark Twain said it best, travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness. And I agree with that a thousand percent. You know, how can you not be a fan of your fellow man if you meet him on his ground or her on her ground? And it's such a great way to go. You know, we've had the luck at Creative Photo Academy of going to New York and to New Orleans and to New Mexico, to Ireland, to Italy, to Japan, and we're going back to Japan in January. If anybody wants to join us, there's two spots left for Japan in January. To Vietnam, which was amazing. To Cuba five times, fantastic. I can't wait to go back to Cuba. We want you to join us. We want you to be part of our safari family as we travel the world together and make amazing pictures and have fun and make friends. So tonight, What's my goal? What's your goal? This sounds awesome and I want to join or yeah, maybe not my cup of tea because really we want to discover that now because once you sign up, you're kind of committed and we're hoping that you're going to join us and have a great time on Safari. So our Safari in 2023, Maurice at Simba Marara Expedition is our host and he will make all of the arrangements for you. He is going to be our ground support here in the United States. Uh, Maurice is an American citizen born and raised in Kenya with family in Kenya. Then we'll be using on our, the ultimate safari, we'll be using the Macon Safari camps and vehicles um, for the ultimate safari. Um, in Uganda, we'll be using Great Lakes safaris, and on the Kenya safari, we'll be using the private safari vehicles and drivers. Um, you guys don't need to worry about all that. I just want to disclose it all up front. Because Africa for me on my first safari, this is me on my first safari, was a bucket list trip. And I've been able to fill that bucket. This will be my 16th time to Africa when we go next year. And I can't wait to go. 
You know, we just got back a couple months ago and I'm ready to go again because it's so amazing. And many of our people say it's their best vacation ever. And for people who've been with us once, half of the group will be people returning again. I, I, I think that a third of the people already signed up are repeaters just from this year's trip in 2022. And you're just gonna have more fun than you ever imagined. We're gonna see awesome stuff. We're gonna have a great time. And you're gonna to get to see what you wanna see. You know, what animals do you wanna see? Do you wanna see the elephants doing what they do, being elephants in the wild? And that's what I love about Kenya and Uganda when we go on safari, because it is wild. It is nature. It is nature the way it was intended to be. Um, the animals are not fenced in. They get 100% natural behavior. And you get to see this. This is right out the front of our Jeep gang with a normal lens. You can see here the other Jeep right in front of us. They're looking at some other elephants. And these elephants crossed right in front of us. And you see the babies are right there. This is so cool. And, you know, Evelyn, Jane, type in how many elephants did we see? How many times did this happen to us on safari when we were in Kenya last earlier this year? Uh, sorry. It, whether it's the giraffes you want to see. Yes, this is how close you get. That's what it's like. But getting this close and having a 400 or a 500 millimeter lens is what's going to help you make those amazing pictures and going to help you tell this fantastic, phenomenal, creative story. That's the power of our safari and what we do together and capturing these magic moments. So here is something you don't always get to see, and that's a giraffe eating grass because the giraffes usually eat, they browse from the trees, they don't graze from the grass. So Jen, are there any questions? Uh, just one question. Michelle wanted to know if the Thursday talk on the technical aspects will be online. Yes, it'll be just like this. It'll be online and it will be recorded. You will be, you'll get a, a link to the recording. And I'm probably just gonna wait and send the links to everyone on Friday from tonight's talk and from Thursday's talk. So pretty cool stuff. I hope you guys all join us. You know, you get to see, you know, this is a saddle build stork. His wing fan span is six or eight feet. He's a giant bird. He flew right in front of us. How cool is that? The leopard walked right in front of us. How cool is that? You look at that, it's amazing, right? Or the leopard in the tree. This is how I'm used to seeing leopards is in the tree. To see this one walking out walking was phenomenal. And I just can't wait to share this with you and, and bring you this fantastic opportunity to photograph in the beauty of Africa. Because this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like when we're on safari. And it's just gorgeous. It's amazing to see the animals. You know, here are the zebra, a hyena, a baboon. Actually, baboons grooming, which is what they do almost all the day long. It's amazing to watch. My favorite bird, the lilac breasted roller. We'll talk about him a lot on the Thursday class, on the challenges of photographing him, and how I had great success in this, in this last safari. The flamingos, oh my gosh, we got to see amazing flamingos in Amboseli this year. The colobus monkey, you know, big or small, the animals, you know, raise your, so gang, type into the chat, are you coming to Africa for the animals and what's your favorite animal? Which animal do you really wanna see on safari? The cheetahs are beautiful. You know, we got to see the cheetahs run three times on this safari when we were there in July. And it was just amazing to watch them run at 60 miles an hour. I just can't wait. The lions, oh my gosh. You know, on this trip, we were a little bit lion poor because we had, there were so many, so many wildebeests and zebras. They, they were not able, they didn't even have to hunt to work. So they just all kind of did their thing. They weren't all together. We saw plenty of other cool stuff like 
a lot of cubs. And how cool is that, right? Mom with the cubs. She actually had two cubs and here she is. She's calling the second cub who's wandered away a little bit. You know, you see the prides of lions, you know, the little ones, you know, sometimes up to 15 or 20 individuals. And that's always exciting, right? So what are we going to see? We're going to see everything and we're going to do it together and we're going to have a great time because it's beautiful. It's fantastic. And who is this? This is me in my happy place, which is on safari in Africa. Oh my gosh, so much fun, so exciting. I just love it. Any questions, Jen? Uh, just one. Uh, Brigida wanted to know if there's a minimum equip equipment requirement to make the trip worthwhile. No, because we always have, Brie, you know, on the trip, we'll have half a dozen people with just their cell phones. And they have just as much fun as the people who have the big lenses. You know, if you want great pictures, I'm going to recommend a 400 millimeter lens. Um, but if you don't have the money for a 400 millimeter lens or you can't carry it, that's okay. You know, we'll talk more about the lenses on Thursday and you'll see the exact equipment. Um, but I don't want you to be intimidated by what I carry, you know, because photography is my life and I pretty much have, you know, no budget for my photography. Um, so you guys, some of you do, and I understand that and we'll help you work it out. You know, we'll help you put it together. Anything else, Jen? Nope. That's it. Great. So I know the questions you've got travel, weather, lodging, food, vehicles, safety, animals. Um, I'm going to try to hit all those tonight. If, if I don't answer your question, please let me know. Um, so the one thing I will answer to you, because I don't think I have a slide on it on the weather, the weather in Kenya and Uganda in July and August is just like it is here in Southern California. Now, in Torrance, California, it's generally 75 or 80 degrees in the daytime and 55 at night. So most of the women especially will want a sweater in the morning and a sweater in the afternoon. <clears throat> we may have a little bit of rain in the afternoon. So you bring a raincoat, but other than that, it's a thousand percent pleasant. You know, I know for any of you who've been with me before, please type into the chat and tell everybody how great the weather is when we go to Africa. So my favorite place to safari is in East Africa. Now, there are other places in Africa. Some people go to Southern Africa. I like to go to East Africa. That would be Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. In 2023, we are going to Kenya and Uganda. In 2024, we'll be going to Tanzania. So how do you get there? You get there however you want. Um, I am a Delta Platinum, so I fly on the Delta um, the, the Delta partner, which would be KLM. And that's a very easy flight from Los Angeles or any place in North America. You fly direct on KLM to Amsterdam. And those flights will generally get you in there at six or seven in the morning. And then you leave. So that means leaving here LA at one o'clock in the afternoon on Monday, so to speak. That would get us into Amsterdam on Tuesday morning at six, seven, eight o'clock. And the flight leaves from Amsterdam about 10 or 11 o'clock, which gets us into Nairobi or Kampala or Entebbe at about 10 or 11 o'clock in the evening. So we used to take a break and stop in Europe in Amsterdam or London or Paris or Istanbul or Doha. I prefer now to fly straight through, go through all the pain at once, and then on these flights, you arrive at 10 o'clock in the evening and you go to bed. Some people will want to spend a day or two in Amsterdam. Amsterdam's a lovely city. It's a great walking city. From the airport, from Schiphol Airport to downtown Amsterdam to the canals is 20 minutes, you know, by a bus or a taxi. And then you can see everything you want in Amsterdam for a day or two and then get back on the flight and continue the flight. I mean, we used to do that. I don't anymore. I just go straight through now. That's 100% up to you. 
And, you know, Maurice can help you with the air arrangements. He has a travel agent friend who can do that. Or, you know, today you can do it online. Hopefully you can use your points. Um, so one decision you need to make on your tour company is which vehicle you're going to use. And there's a lot of choices in vehicles. We use the modified Toyota Land Cruisers. They're reliable, they're dependable. And when you're, if you're on the ultimate safari, there will be three of us in the vehicle. If you're on the standard safari, there'll be four of us in the vehicle. And what I love about the, the, um, these vehicles are, we remove one row of seats. So there's room to move around and you can shoot low from a sitting position or high from a standing position. All the trucks will have bean bags in them so that you don't need to bring a bean bag with you. If you have a special bean bag, you can bring it if you like, but there's no need to bring a bean bag. Um, it's just an awesome way to go. And these are the best vehicles I've found. We'll be using these in, in, both, in both of the Kenya safaris in 2023. Um, so there's room for all to see, there's room for all to photograph, and it's just, it's a great way to travel. So what do you pack? I mean, you go light and nimble, and as we go closer, I'll send you guys a link to how to pack your camera bag, how to pack your, um, your clothing, but basically you pack three sets of clothes, underwear, socks, shirt, pants, you wear one that's four, you prep pack a camp outfit. Some of the ladies like a sundress or something like that or something fun to wear to dinner, a swimsuit, a jacket, a raincoat, that's it. You don't need hiking boots for a regular safari. You just need to be comfortable and safe. I always wear a long sleeve shirt and long pants. Um, some people are okay with short pants and short and short sleeves, that's up to you. Any questions, Jen? No questions. So here I am dressed for safari, you with my long sleeve shirt, a hat, long pants, and yeah, there I am. I'm ready to go. So this is actually me in Uganda on safari, having fun. So Bree, you asked about your camera. It's basically whatever gear you have. I'm gonna hopefully inspire you to up your game a little bit, mirrorless SLR, big zoom camera, iPhone, it doesn't matter. So this is my camera bag. We'll talk more about this on, um, on Thursday. So I care, it's a Mindshift First Light 40. It's a big camera bag. I have the Nikon Z9, the Z7 II, 24 to 70, 70 to 200, 400, 1.4 converter, and a pair of binoculars in this bag. And then when I'm on the airplane, it has my laptop, a novel, change of clothes, stuff like that, so I can survive in the airport and all, and, and, and all of that. So I generally have two cameras going. The camera number one, was, which in 2022 was a Z9 with the 400 millimeter prime lens on it. And then camera number two has a 24 to 70 or 70 to 200 depending on what I want my secondary picture to be. So do I want the close-up of the rhino with the 400 on the right? And do I want the mother and the child with the 70 to 200? Or do I want the two rhinos with the scenery with the 24 to 70? If you only have one camera, that's fine. You know, you'd get by with one camera. So bean bag on the, the um, roll, roll cage on the top of the Jeep is how we do it. So the bean bag sits on the roll cage, the big lens or your camera. You can see Jenny there has a Nikon camera with a Tamron 28 to 300. And Cindy has a Canon 5D with a 300 2.8 and a 1.4 converter. So no matter what equipment you have, you shoot it the same. We have a great time doing it. Any questions, Jen? Uh, Gary just wanted to know if he can, uh, let's see, can I still get in the Zoom class later in the week, even sure. if I can't go to Africa? Okay. Sure, absolutely. Because I'm going to hopefully inspire you to join us and hopefully inspire you to buy a new camera. That's the whole point here, gang. Come on. So are you laughing? Was that funny, Jen? 
<laughs> a little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what is our typical safari day? And this will vary from time to time. You know, wake up at six o'clock, 6.30 a.m. morning game drive, 10 o'clock breakfast, after breakfast rest, two o'clock lunch, three o'clock afternoon game drive, returning at 6.30, dinner at 7.30, after dinner, drinks and sharing pictures by the campfire. You know, so this is the way it rolls every day. Sometimes we'll adjust it. Sometimes we'll get up and have breakfast at 6.15 and then leave at 7 and not be back until almost lunchtime. It all depends on what's happening with the animals and how far we have to go and where they are. You know, and I want to stress with you ladies and gentlemen, it's not camping. Even when we're in the tented camps, it's not camping. It is luxurious. It is, and you know, my wife and I are not super fancy people, but it's probably the nicest hotels we have ever been to in our, in our life. You know, and we're not Ritz Carlton people, but you know, we're certainly a nice Marriott or Weston or some kind of like that hotel. And the hotels in Africa, the lodges in Africa are nicer than all of those. It's amazing. But that's why they're a night too, because you're in the middle of nowhere and this is the level of service you have. You know, your rooms are nice. This is in a tent, gang. This is your tent with a toilet, a shower, all of that in your tent. You don't have to worry about it. Questions, Jen? Yeah, we got a couple. Um, first of all, are you going to resend the link for Thursday's talk? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, are there any concerns related to malaria? Are there particular vaccines people need to get? Sure. So we'll talk about that once you've signed up. But you, so you're required if you're under 60 to have a yellow fever shot. If you're over 60, that's waived. Um, if your doctor recommends you to have yellow fever, if you're over 60, you should get it. I take malaria pills and I use the once a day, the Malarone pills. Um, there are once a week malaria pills, but some people get a little upset stomach on those, so I don't recommend them. Um, the first time I went to Africa, being a guy who hadn't been to the doctor in forever, I needed eight shots because all of my regular vaccines had lapsed. But nowadays I have everything. So all I do is I go to the doctor, I get my malaria pills and I'm good to go. It's no big deal. It's a hundred percent safe. You know, it's, it's just, like I say, it's no big deal. Any other questions, Jen? Well, there was another question. Yeah, a couple more. Cheryl wants to know if it's possible to just do the gorilla leg of the tour. Absolutely it is. Yes, indeed. Yep, yep, yep. You can do whatever you want. We'll talk about that as we get a little closer. So this is the typical dining room and the bar area in one of the lodges. Some of the lodges we get to eat outside on the patio. If the weather's nice, you know, we eat outside. It's amazing. You know, you can see what we're eating there, what we're drinking, right? Because we're going on safari together. So we have three safaris in 2023. They are all independent, but they all can be linked together. So the ultimate photo safari we'll talk about is a small group experience, eight photographers, three photographers per, per vehicle in mobile tented camps, ultimate photo safari. So on this safari, we will be hard charging to get the animal photos. And if you don't mind skipping lunch one day or being back late for dinner so we miss cocktail hour, then you're gonna be okay on the ultimate photo safari. If it's your first time to Africa, you're not a hard charging photographer that I would recommend our standard, our traditional Kenya photo safari. So the gorilla trek in Uganda, you can see there's a couple day gap between the two, which if you want to join us for both, we will fill in for you. Maurice and I are already working on a program to bridge those two days. Unfortunately, when we were in Africa this year, we tried to book the same days as last year, but those dates were already full. So we had to move the dates around a little bit 
And that's why we have a little bit of a gap there to get the dates at the lodges that we wanted because getting the lodges that we want is the key. So ultimate photo safari, July 19th to 29th in Kenya. Gorilla Tech Trek, August 1st to 7th in Uganda. We'll talk about that in just a minute. And the Kenya Photo Safari, August 8th to the 18th in Kenya. So all of the trips can link together. If you wanna go for the whole enchilada and be with me for 30 days in Africa, bring it on. I would love to spend the time with you. If you wanna pick one or two of the trips together, you are welcome to do that. So Cheryl, did that answer your questions? Any other, que yes. any other questions, Jen? Yeah, a couple more. So back to the weather, is it dry or humid there? Dry. And then can you drink the water? No. Bottled okay, water and... everywhere. It's not a problem, guys. So in your room, they, most of the, so plastic is just about banned in Africa. I wish we would do that here. So there are no plastic bags. There are no plastic bottles. So you will be given an aluminum water bottle that you carry with you. And there is in the room a carafe of, bo of, of bottled water, purified water that's safe to drink. All of the lodges serve us all of the food that is 100% safe to eat and drink. You can you drink the ice cubes, you can eat the lettuce, you can eat raw fruit, you can eat anything because it's all prepared for us. And if you follow the rules, you won't get sick. Other questions, Jen? Couple more. Uh, what is mobile tented camping? So it is mobile, which means the, tamp, the camp is not permanent and it's a tent, it, but it's got hard floors. So it's, it's a tent, it's not a lodge. So in the Gorilla Trek and in the Kenya Photo Safari, we stay in lodges, which are like, uh, if you can imagine a hunting lodge in Alaska or in Wyoming, right? That's where we are. We're at the ultimate safari. We have the mobile tented camps that are slightly different. Did that answer whoever, whoever's question that is? And you'll get to see pictures. I have pictures of the camps, guys. So, okay. Yeah, the, Cheryl said yes, just like Good. glamping. Um, yeah, it's like glamping. Questions. Yes. <laughs> Couple more questions. Um, are there electrical outlets for charging? Do people bring power banks? Yes, yes. I always recommend that you bring a power bank, but this is into the weeds, guys. This is stuff that we handle in the packing and once you're ready to go stuff. So if you wanna ask it, go ahead, but it's all answered. So the Kenya photo safari, if it's your first time to Africa, if you're coming with your spouse or significant other that's not a photographer, I would tell you to do the Kenya photo safari where we do two nights in Nairobi, go to the Giraffe Manor and the, Jan and the Sheldrick Trust. We spend two nights in Amboseli where we're right in the shadow of Mount Kilimanjaro and we get to see the elephants. And then we have two three-day treks on the Maasai Mara, one at, at, um, at uh, the Mara Sarova camp and one at Kichwa Tembo Camp. Um, we'll talk about all that as we go along tonight, okay? Other questions, Jen? Um, one last question. Any concerns about theft with, with your equipment? No. It, you're, you're more likely to lose your equipment out of the back of your truck going to the airport than you are in Africa. We have never had in 15 safaris to Africa, we have never had one piece of equipment stolen. Other questions, Jen? That's it for now. Great. So we're going to Kenya for both safaris. Kenya's amazing. We'll be based out, we're flying in and out of Nairobi. On the Ultimate Safari, we will be going to the Maasai Mara Game Reserve area. On the Kenya Photo Safari, we will be going first to Nairobi, 
then to Amboseli, and then to Maasai Mara. So we'll be flying between the different camps and small planes. It's really fun. I love it. You get to see a picture of the planes in a minute. For the um, gorilla chimpanzee safari, we're going to be going to Uganda, which is, in my opinion, the best place to see the gorillas. Um, it's a little technically challenging to move around Uganda um, because of the, some distances, but I think the gorilla experience and the chimpanzee experience is overall a much better experience from, for you. So we'll be flying into Kamp to Entebbe Airport, which is outside of the capital of Kampala, and then flying and driving to Kabali National Park to see the chimpanzees and to Bwindi Impenetrable Forest to see the gorillas. And these are, gang, amazing experiences. Everything we're going to do is amazing. So here's your safari team. So you know me from Paul's photo. Maurice is from Simba Marara. He is our ground support here in Los Angeles. He will be, he's the one who you're going to talk to about your reservations and pay your deposit to, and will help you with your air, air accommodations. We'll help you if you want to do an extension before and after. And then once we're on the ground in Kenya, Oscar is, has been my guide for my whole for my whole career in Africa. Oscar has been with us. He's an amazing guy at private safaris. And I just love Oscar and he takes just such great care of us. So we're very lucky to have an amazing team. So if you have reservations, logistics questions, call Maurice and you'll get this information by email from me. Maurice is very responsive. He's an amazing guy. He will get you taken care of. And you need to sign up now because you want to start looking for airfare deals and you want to get locked in. So judging from the response we've had so far, these safaris may be filled by the end of the week or early next week. So please, please, please make your phone calls, get your reservations in. If you have photo related questions, call me. I'm the photographer, I'm your photo leader. Maurice is the one who's putting together the logistics and he will be glad to help you with that. And of course, if you have questions for me, I'm always here to answer. Any questions, uh, Jen? Uh, just one question, Gary asks, um about uh, waterfall on Lake Victoria. Is that close to where the safaris will be? So Lake Victoria is relatively, so you will be, uh, Entebbe Airport is on Lake Victoria if you go to Uganda. Victoria Falls is in Southern Africa. It's a seven hour plane ride away. So the ultimate photo safari, Uganda Gorilla Trek, Kenya photo safari. Um, if you have questions about them, call me. If you want to talk about the logistics, what it's like, you know, I know that Evelyn's on the line here and Jane's on the line here. They will chime in. You're welcome to call women if you want to have questions. You can talk to my wife, Cheryl, here at Paul's Photo. She is not a photographer. She loves to go. She can't wait to go with us again next year. So how do you choose which of the three safaris to go on? Your schedule. I know a couple of you have said, you know, Mark, I really want to go on the Kenya, but I'm not available. Can I do the ultimate? Yes. But mainly you would choose by your interest level, right? I want to go see the gorillas. So sign up for the gorillas, right? That's why we built three different experiences so that you can make the choice. So the ultimate photo safari, 14,500 per person, double occupancy. If you don't have a roommate, if you're not bringing a roommate, then you need to pay the $2,900 to get a single room. If you don't wanna pay the $2,900, have a friend join you on the trip. It's much more funner that way if you travel with a friend. We try to help people find a roommate but at Creative Photo Academy, we don't stick you with some roommate you don't know. So you'll have to come with us or ask us to help you find a roommate. Now, what does that money include? Lodging, meals, safaris, guides, park fees, internal airfare. So the airplanes we fly around to the camps, that's all paid for. 
What's not included is the international airfare from LA or wherever you're going to, to Africa. And if you're flying from, from Kenya to Uganda or from Uganda to Kenya, that is not included. The visas, it's $100 per country to get a visa. Um, easy to do, it's online. Travel insurance, some of the meals are not included. Mainly those are like the in and out days when we're just quickly in a hotel. Alcohol, soft drinks, laundry, and tips are not included. But it's basically all included. The ultimate photo safari, uh, July 19th to the 29th. So three Maasai Mara locations, three luxury tented camps, three photographers for vehicle, small group experience, photo focused, you know, hopefully we'll be spending a lot of time. We'll have time for image reviews and stuff and stuff along the way. Um, this is the Embu River Camp in Kenya. So you can see it's it's not a permanent camp. You know, they they take it up and put it down every year. This is the Entim Camp, but it's very luxurious. It's not camping. It's glamping, right? So very very nice, amazing location. And why are we doing three locations? So the Maasai Mara is a big park area. It's a national park, a national reserve, a wildlife conservancy. So we want to be able to move to different parts of the camp, of, of the, of the um, area, so that we can see the different animals that are habituating in different animals. And finally, the natural habitats camp. So this is what, we're, this is what a mobile tented camp looks like. It will be awesome fun and you will have an amazing experience. Yes, you have flush toilets. Yes, you have showers. Yes, there's a bar with gin and tonic. Um, is there any questions I missed on that, um, uh, uh, Jen? No, no questions. Awesome. But we're there to photograph the animals and be close to the animals and be out in nature. And on the ultimate safari, we are going to track an animal. We are going to decide today, okay, we're going to go see what we find, or you know, we haven't seen the lions hunting, so let's go find the lions and watch them hunt. Let's go find the cheetahs and watch them hunt. Let's go see how what the elephants do all day. And we'll spend lots of time with the animals watching them do what they do. And it's amazing fun to watch the animals. It's amazing to sit with the animals, watch their behavior and just be a part of what they do. The pace will be slow until it's fast and then it's not. And we'll get to see amazing stuff. We will get to see the great migration. That's why we're going to the Maasai Mara in July and August. Both safaris will be there for the migration. Hopefully both groups, both the ultimate group and the Kenya group will get to see a crossing of the Mara River. So on our last safari, both groups got to see a crossing. One group got to see two crossings and it's an amazing experience. You know, I didn't put my picture in from this year because on this year's safari, the savanna was black with animals. There were so many wildebeest and zebras. You could hardly see the grass and we got to see the crossings. And we're gonna work our devilest to get you to a crossing, to see the great crossing, to see the animals crossing the river, to see a stork landing on a carcass, to watch the, the giraffes cross the road in front of us, to see the zebras interacting with each other, that's the, what we're going to be doing. And it's amazing fun. It's just fantastic. Yeah, we'll play with Blur if you want. This is all up to you. It's what you guys want to do. You know, I'm there to direct, to help. Our guides will be there. Jackson will be there to help us out, to find the animals, to catch a, a, um, a buzzard. Just amazing. The elephants. This is what the ultimate safari is about. Waiting to find the animals. Yes. And we're photographing and we're having fun. Questions, Jen? No questions. 
the Uganda Gorilla Trek, August 1st to 7th. The same things are included. In, but, and what's really included here are your gorilla permits, which are $1,500 a day, and your chimpanzee permit, which is $400 a day. So that's most of the money we're paying. So it's $7,900 per person, double occupancy, $1,500 for a single room. The Uganda trek is amazing. So two luxury locations, one day with the chimpanzees, two days with the gorilla and visits to the local community to support the local community. We've really taken a liking to the women's village in uh, Bahoma, Uganda, and uh, you'll get to go there and meet Evie, the director. I've got pictures for you. So once again, flying to Entebbe, either from the United States. So if you're gonna start with the gorillas, you fly LA to Amsterdam, Amsterdam to Entebbe. We will meet you in Entebbe go to a hotel, spend the night. The next morning we get up, we fly to Kasese and then drive to Kabali National Park to see the chimpanzees the next day. Then we'll fly from Kasese to, to Kahihi. And then I know the names, it's kind of like Hawaii guys. Then we'll fly to Kahihi and drive to Buindi National Park to Bahoma, spend two days with the gorillas. And the gorillas are amazing i love uganda i you know this this was my second trip to uganda you know so there's maurice and i in uganda here we are you know just in the in the in the kabale uh, primate lodge that's maurice just we're having a great time right these are the crater lakes in uganda we'll be driving by them on our way to the gorillas i mean and to the to the chimpanzees and we'll get to kabale national park the home of the chimpanzees. Um, I love the chimpanzees. And the reason we do the chimpanzees first, it is an easier experience. It's, a, it's roughly a mile walk from the chimp center to where we find the chimps. Um, and then we have an hour with the chimps. You're able to photograph. And I use this as a test, as a practice session because photographing the chimps is very much like photographing the gorillas. It's challenging. We'll talk more about that on Thursday night. Um, but being with the chimps is amazing. You know, Primate Lodge in Kabale, amazing place. You know, almost the owner, hopefully we'll get to meet him. He's a fantastic guy. He's built an amazing lodge here. It's beautiful. It's fun. It's, it's exciting. You know, this is the campfire. You can see that's the dining room over the campfire. Um, this is a lodge. It's hard-sided buildings. It has a bar. It has a dining room. You have cabins where you sleep um, in the middle of the forest. And there are primates because it is in the middle of the national park. There are more primates in Kabali National Park than any place in the world. And they cruise around the camp. You see them up in the trees. It's so much fun. The next day we will go and have our chimpanzee briefing, be told about the chimpanzees, given the rules of the road to visit the chimpanzees. And then we walk and go get to see the chimps. And they're right there. They're in the trees. You know, this is what it was like on our walk to go see the chimps. You know, for me, that's a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. Um, and on the chimp walk, on the gorilla walks, you don't have to carry your camera bags. We hire a porter for $20 and they will carry your bag for you. And this is what it's like to walk through the forest and see the chimpanzees, to see the mothers with the babies, to see them grooming each other and eating and just hanging out. And you get to spend an hour with them. And you'll get to see a lot of my chimpanzee and gorilla pictures on Thursday night. Um, it's just an amazing experience. And to look into their eyes, it's not like looking into an animal's eyes. It's like looking into your brother or sister's eyes. It's that deep. There's that much communication. You know, they're 97% of the DNA that we have. And it's so great to see the animals in nature doing their thing. I love it. To watch them with their behaviors. So this is the mother and baby. 
and the mother is grooming the baby, picking the fleas or whatever off of the baby. This is one of the things that they do all the time and it's a great behavior to watch. Then we'll move to Bahoma, to windy and penetrable forest. And it's a little cooler because we're at a little higher altitude, about 5,000 feet. It's always misty there because of the altitude. This is the Mahogany Springs Lodge where you stay. And this mountain right here is where the gorillas are. And we'll go down to the gorilla center. And then the next morning, we'll go up and see the gorillas. So these are the rooms, the dining room at the um, Mahogany Springs Lodge. Any questions, Jen? No questions. Is this answering your questions, guys? Am I giving you what you want here? All right. Getting some yeses, yeah. All right, good. So this is, you know, outdoor dining at Mahogany Springs, a different room at Mahogany Springs. Um, so then we go to Windy and we get a briefing. We break up into groups according to ability. And it's a one to two hour walk to see the gorillas. Now, I will warn you, it's straight up to go see the gorillas. It's like climbing stairs. So for many of us, that means we start training now. We start walking now. And so here's the group. We did the gorilla trek hikes with our, the group. I took on Sundays once a month. We went out and gorilla hiked together to get our sea legs. Um, but if you can't make a one to two hour uphill hike, there's an alternative, right? We'll see that in a minute. So we go to the gorilla center, we get our briefing, we get divided into groups by ability. Why we go to Bwindi and we go here to Bahoma, there are four habituated gorilla groups within a short walk of Bahoma town where we stay. And so we can get to those gorillas relatively easily. And it's, it's just, it's fantastic. I love it um, to be able to get out and see the gorillas, phenomenal. And this is what I look like dressed for gorillas. So I'm kind of dressed exactly like I was for safari, except you have a hiking boots. So you need hiking boots, you need gaiters, the walking stick they have for you at the gorilla center. So you don't need to worry about that. So for those of us doing the gorilla trek, you're just gonna throw a pair of hiking boots into your into your pack. Questions? No questions. This is what the hike looks like. We're hiking through the jungle on a trail. So what happens is the gorillas have rangers with them all day long. When the gorillas bed down for the night, the gorillas make a camp every night. The rangers leave them at dusk when the gorillas are bedded down. The rangers go back to that same spot first thing in the morning and pick up the gorillas. And then they're with them all day long. And those gorilla, those rangers are in radio contact with us as we're hiking towards the gorillas so that we know we're going to where the gorillas are. We're not hunting around trying to find them. We know where they are and we're walking to find the gorillas. And here's a group. It's generally eight individuals plus eight porters and two rangers. So the guys in the gray, the men and women in the gray are the porters. The ones in the camouflage are the rangers. And we go. If you don't feel like you can walk, you can go the Cleopatra route and take an African helicopter. So this is Maurice with a helicopter and 12 guys will carry you up the mountain so four at a time and they switch off every 15 minutes or so and they will carry you up to the gorillas. So those of you who are worried about the hike, do the helicopter. We'll meet the villagers along the way because some of the hike goes through the village. It's amazing. You'll see that there in Bahoma, they grow coffee, tea and bananas. And if we want, we'll visit the village and we'll drink tea and drink coffee and have banana beer with the locals. It's so much fun. But this is what it's like 
to see the gorillas. You're right up close. These are with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens from about six or seven feet away. And you can actually have nonverbal communication with them. You'll see the mothers and babies. You know, one of the families we saw this time had four babies, four mothers, four babies. It was phenomenal. And you look, you look right into their eyes and there's no threat, gang. There's no fear. You're just communicating as one animal to another. It's amazing to spend this time to be there with them. And it just get, it gives me goosebumps now to talk about it. You know, Jane and Evelyn, if you're out there, please type in. Jim, if you're out there, whoever's been with me before, type in what it's like. So this is how close you get. There's Maurice on the left and there's the big silverback on the right. That's how close you get. This is what it's like with the gorillas. So mother and baby, here comes the silverback and the rest of the females in the troop. Now this one didn't like me, so she went the other way. She was afraid. If she didn't like, now she doesn't like it, and then she's gonna go back, right? They're individuals, they're doing their own thing, right? But that's what it's like. And you get to interact with the gorillas. It's so amazing. I just can't say enough about the, sorry, the gorillas. Here's, how about this one? So Maurice took this video, because there's me and there's the gorilla going by. So yes, you have to wear a mask. So this, last year and this year, we have to wear a mask when we're with the gorillas. Um, next year, I don't know what that's gonna, what the protocol is gonna be, but we ask you to bring a mask in case you need to. Then we'll visit the Ride for a Woman Center, which is Evie founded that with her husband. And it is a shelter for the local women. It's a co-op where they make arts and crafts and sell them. Uh, questions, Jen? No questions. Just everyone's commenting how great the trip was, those that have been on it. <laughs> I love it. Woohoo! So this is Evie on the right. She is the, the founder of the center. And that's Shauna on the left, the general manager. Um, and we'll go there and visit. You know, so last year, a couple of the women got you know, new pottery, got, you know, purses and dresses and, and baskets, you know, they shipped a lot of it here to Paul's photo. I had boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff come over and it was great to support the women. And then one afternoon, if we want, we'll take a, there's a beautiful waterfall. You know, it's a, it's a two mile walk away from, from the lodge. We can go to the waterfalls if you want. And then we'll return to Kenya for our Kenya photo safari. So Kenya photo safari, Nairobi, August 8th to the 20 to the 18th, um, $11,900 per person double occupancy. Why is it less money than the ultimate? Because there are 20 people on the Kenya safari. There are eight on the ultimate. So it just has a little bit more cost but it doesn't matter. You're gonna be four photographers per vehicle. So you have plenty of room to photograph. Um, the great thing is with four, four people for vehicle, if you're a couple and you bring another couple friend, you guys will share a Jeep for the whole time. So we'll be two nights in Nairobi, two nights in Embiseli, three nights at the Mara Sarova, and three nights at Kichwa Tembo. This is our classic Africa safari. If you've never been on safari before or you're only gonna go on one safari, this is the safari I would recommend. If you can only schedule to do the ultimate, then just do the ultimate. If you really wanna go hardcore on the photography, do the ultimate. It's amazing. So land in Nairobi, um, two nights in Nairobi, off to to Amboseli and then to Masai Mara. 
So the Nairobi Serena, where we'll spend our first two nights, great hotel right downtown, close to the activities we're gonna use, beautiful Western style rooms, lunch at an amazing location in Nairobi before we go off to the Giraffe Center. And the Giraffe Center is a rescue center for the Rothschild's giraffes. And you can have a personal interaction with the giraffes. You can meet the giraffes, you can touch the giraffes, you can feed the giraffes. It's super fun. Yep, you can even kiss a giraffe if you want. And how do you kiss a giraffe? You hold the little giraffe pellet in your lips and the giraffe will grab it with their tongue. And it's amazing fun. If you're not into that, it's okay. You can just watch and take pictures. Then we'll go to the Sheldrick Wildlife Trust um, where we have adopted elephants and rhinos because the Sheldrick Trust rescues orphaned animals, mainly elephants and rhinos, and then they raise them and return them to the wild. Um, so it's a great, great, great um, charity. You know, in our family, we've adopted four or five different elephants. It costs $50 a year to adopt an elephant. Um, it's well worth the effort. You know, I apologize to the first group last year. We didn't get to go see the elephants at Sheldrick. Um, there was a logistics problem there. Um, but we're going to try to work that out this year and see the elephants and be up close and touch the elephants. We'll be there for the adoptive parents talks where you get to see the elephants up close, see the, 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 um, the, the, where the elephants spend the night, meet the keepers who are with your elephants. You'll see Max the rhino, you know, and the other rhinos they have if, if we're able to get too close to them. You'll meet the rangers, the keepers, so this is what it looks like, gang. It's just a beautiful experience to see the care for these animals and how they respond to their human keepers and the life that they have. And then we're off to the bush to have some fun. Any, any questions, Jen? No questions. And to photograph. Out in and the Sully. And we'll be at this, uh, sorry, this is wrong. We're gonna be at the old Tokai Lodge in Ambicelli. I, 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 we made a change and I forgot to change it. Beautiful lodge, great location, swimming pool, beautiful spot in Ambicelli National Park. And Ambicelli is on the Kenya side of Mount Kilimanjaro and the water from Kilimanjaro feeds a swamp in Ambicelli where you see great herds of elephants up to their chest in water. And it's beautiful. And giant herds of elephants in the swamp, up close and personal with the elephants doing their thing. The hippos in the water doing their thing. The lions of Ambicelli, beautiful. The cheetahs in the tree in Ambicelli, amazing. The landscape in Ambicelli. And then off to the Maasai Mara, where we'll see amazing birds. And the baboons. And the impalas. And more elephants and elephants, and elephants, and beautiful sunsets. Yes. So we'll fly from Ambicelli to the Mara and be there for the action. We'll be at the Sarova Mara Game Camp and Kichwa Tembo tented camps. These are permanent camps. They're very luxurious. You know, so, so Evelyn, Jane, chime in about Kichwa Tembo and uh, Mara Sarova, how amazing those are. Um, just fantastic locations. Just beautiful. You know, Kichwa Tembo is my favorite place on earth, I think. Um, 
And when I get to pick my last trip, it's going to be to go to Kichwa Timbo. Because here we are in the Mara, underneath the escarpment where you see the animals. And this is why we're going. This is what we're going to see. You know, and I've been there 15 times and I never tire of the experience. I never tire of seeing the animals and recording the animals and making the pictures. Because it's phenomenal. And you're right up close. We get to have these, these moments with the animals. Now, I will say that in the Mara, the rhinos are very rare. You know, but on one trip, we got to see the rhino a couple times. On the first trip this year, we didn't get to see the rhino at all. On the second trip, we saw one rhino. But we're out. We're making the pictures. We're enjoying the world. Enjoying the animals. Watching the prides of lions interact. In the rain. Together. It's just glorious. So much fun. And these are the kinds of pictures that you're going to get. This is the kind of experience you're going to have as we go together to make these amazing photographs, to capture these amazing moments. Are there any questions, Jen? One question, which of the Kenya safaris sees the larger quantity of animals or which has the larger variety of animals? They're going to be this, oh, uh, well, they're going to, it's going to be the same. And you can't, the difference is you're going to get a little bit on the, on the Kenya safari, you're going to get a, two different parks. But on the ultimate safari, you're going to see three areas of the same park instead of two. So that's a 50, 50 proposition. I, I don't really know how to answer that. Um, it, and it really depends. You know, I tell people that safari is like fishing. You know, sometimes you catch a fish and sometimes all you do is have a great time. You know, safari is always amazing. It's always fun. And, you know, even though we don't see a giant amount of animals, we've never been skunked. We've never been skunked on a, you know, sometimes you just don't see a lot in the morning, but then you see a ton of stuff in the afternoon or you drive around all morning and don't see anything. And as you're just about ready to give up and head back to the lodge, oh my gosh, there's everything you ever wanted to see in five minutes. So you can't know, there's no, there's no predicting that. If it's your first safari, I would say to go on the Kenya safari. If you want a more intimate experience with the animals, I would do the ultimate. Other questions, Jen? That's it so far. Great. Are you guys loving the pictures? Are you loving the animals? You know, so on that, that there, there's how close you get, right? Yeah, we had, Every single time we have lions underneath the car in the shade, cheetahs underneath the car in the shade, and it's just part of the experience. And you guys are gonna to get to make these pictures and we'll be there to help you. I'll be there. This is what it looks like when it's full of animals. You know, it's just, it's so glorious, it's amazing, right? I love the Mara, beautiful land, beautiful scenery, beautiful birds. It's just phenomenal. The experiences are amazing. So I want to share this one for you. This is Jane and Evelyn. I know they're both here. Evelyn, you can sh be shy if you want. But hold on a second. I have to change the microphone here. Or hold on, we'll do it this way. 
What did we just see, y'all? Crossing. That great migration. Was it awesome? Yeah. Fantastic. And what happened, Evelyn? The world be cut. <laughs> the river. And it was like. And what did you experience? Just, it was orgasmic. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you guys hear that? I, yeah, because that's that's the kind of experience we have. Game. Oops, sorry. That's the experience we have every single time. There's our group from last year, from the last trip in in July. It was phenomenal. You know, we want you to join our safari family and get out and experience the animals, experience nature, experience Africa, and just have a fantastic time because we love it. We love going with you and bringing you with us and seeing what we see and having the experience together. So here's our team. If you have questions, write to Maurice tonight, call Maurice, make your reservation. We'll start working on the airfare. We'll start working on your camera kit and your skills. If you have photo questions, call me or write me. Um, you guys all got email from me today. I'll send you Maurice's contact information as well. Decide which trip you want to go on. I would love to have you. You can do one or the other or both or all three. That's up to you. Are there any questions? All right, hold on. Stop the sharing. Boom. I can open the chat now, Jen. I can see the chat. 40 new messages. <clears throat> so, Teresa, we will send you all the flight informations um, and, and all that. So that we'll send all that to you as we get closer. I still, so the air flights are right now a crapshoot because the airlines are moving flights around on everything. So just relax on that. We'll get you taken care of. Um, yeah, Jane, we saw so much. So... Yes, yeah, so Bree, the sign up is with Maurice, not Creative Photo Academy. So I am not a travel agent. I, we cannot do this level of a trip. So that's why we, we partner with somebody like Maurice who can do that. So 18, 18, seven, um, would a Tamron 18 to 400? Sure, if, if that meets your quality standards, that's fine. We have a lot of people with a one lens does all. I want a full frame camera with a bigger lens, um, but that's up to you. It's everyone gets what they want. So Brian, if you have questions, you know, about the animals, call me. Um, yeah, Evelyn who saw the silverback. Yep. Peggy. Oh, Peggy's on. Great. Hey, Peggy. How are you? Awesome. Yes. Yes. Uh, other questions? Yeah, Teresa's looking for a roommate. There you go. Awesome. So on safari, we're out three to four hours in the morning and generally two to three hours in the afternoon. Um, you can't be in the park for sunrise or sunset. So a lot of times we'll race, race back, get out of the park and find a place for sunset and then head back for dinner. Um, is that the question you wanted? Is that the answer you wanted, Marcus? Did, did I answer it right? So. Yeah, so you know, we're generally, my group is usually the first ones out in the morning and the last ones back in the afternoon. So the August, the August safari is 11,900 for, um, for double occupancy, 3,500 for the single supplement. Did that answer, Peggy? You're welcome. Anybody else? <laughs> Yes. So are you going to come again, Peggy? Or are you going to bring, are you going to send somebody? Peggy is from New York. She's one of our Creative Photo Academy regulars and she's all the way from New York. So I love that. <laughs> Anybody else? Any questions? <laughs> well, Peggy, you just have to sell some more pottery. And you've got that 500 millimeter lens. You need to use it again. That's, 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 that's the uh, sales pitch there. 
Jen, did I miss any questions? No, I think you got them all. <laughs> okay. Um, on Thursday, I will, yes, we will talk about infrared um, because, you know, infrared is part of what I did. So Thursday night, that's, that's great, Marcus. Thank you. You talked about that. So I'm going to talk to you about the camera settings. I'm going to talk about um, the gear I brought and why. And we're going to talk about why we had the best success we've ever had. And I can tell you that Peggy and Evelyn and Jane, and I don't know who else is, I haven't seen who else is on here from last trip, had amazing pictures with very little experience. And so Peggy, Jane, Evelyn, will you agree that you guys got the best pictures you've ever gotten on the trip? So I'm not like the lawyer who asks a question he knows the answer to. <laughs> see, yep, yep, yep. And see, part of the testament to what we do is you've got three folks on here. So Jane's been with me twice, Evelyn's been three times and Peggy once, and they're ready to go back again. So, yep. All right, gang, any more questions? All right, I will send you the links for Thursday nights, um, the, the tech talk, the Z in Africa talk. Um, I will answer all your questions then. If you have questions, write me, um, email mark at pulsephoto.com and I'll make sure I answer those during the presentation. Um, I'll send you the recordings of this plus my how to pack for Africa clothes and camera bag talks. Um, you're welcome, Al. I love it. But most importantly, so what are you supposed to do tonight when we're done? Call Maurice. You have his information. He is your, your portal to get you signed up and get you going on the trip, get your deposit in. And so people ask me about making payments. Yes, you make payments. You put your deposit in now, in a couple months, you send another couple thousand bucks, and then you send another couple thousand bucks. And finally, by the time you know July comes around next year, or actually April or May, when it, the final bill is due, you're already paid up, so you're good to go. That's the way to do it. All right, gang, thank you very much. Have a great evening, and we'll talk. Uh, yep, there you go, Peggy, yep. Awesome. Thanks, Ron. It's great to have you on here. Thanks, Peggy. Thanks to all of you who I didn't see and call out by name. Um, it's great to have you join us. And we'll see you guys tomorrow night for the Canon Bird Photography Talk, for Boot Camp tomorrow night, Thursday for the Nikon Z in Africa Talk, and on Friday night and Saturday night at the Kenyan Consulate in LA. It's going to be a great time. Thank you all so much, everyone. Good night.